Welcome everyone back to the channel. This is Zach, your host here on the Yo Bro Nation YouTube channel. And I am doing Retro Rewind episode number 14. Holy crap. Oh, Jesus. All right, 14. Episode, yeah, 14. And today we are talking Royal Rumble 2001. Welcome everyone back to the channel. How are you doing? There I am. There I am. Here I am. We are, uh... We're talking Royal Rumble. 2001. I remember... I remember the Royal Rumble from 2001. I remember getting together with a couple friends, me, my buddy Corey, and uh, my, one of my best friends, Joe. And we ended up going to Corey's house, and he, his, uh, his mom ordered the pay-per-view. And I remember, it was like, it was a big deal to me, you know? It was a big pay-per-view. I was going into my you know, final summer of, of you know, being a kid. But I remember that show. And I remember just being so excited so excited and just just ready just ready to watch it ready to enjoy it and i remember Corey and and all of us watching it and just getting hyped up you know especially when the main event and austin won we were all so hyped i used to spend a lot of days over at Corey's watching what was it uh <clears throat> the replacements yeah the replacements i remember that i loved the replacements and then watching this again reminded me of, of watching that stuff all over again. It was fun. It was all fun stuff. Honestly, it was all fun. And it just takes me back. You know, rewatching this takes me back to my childhood. It really does. Um, yeah, just, it was so great. But yeah, the Royal Rumble in 2001. Hmm. <laughs> took place in New Orleans, Louisiana, at the New Orleans Arena. 17,137 were in attendance with a pay-per-view buy rate of 625,000, which was pretty good. Uh, probably one of the lower-end ones of that year in 2001. Um, it'd be, I think it was a little bit lower than the year prior at the Royal Rumble, but... Just going back and just, like I was listening to this and I was listening to that opening package for the show, the opening hype package where they were, you know, the real epic score and the guy talking over it, you know, about the road to WrestleMania, the showcase of the immortals and, ah, oh my goodness. Don't ask me why I am dying of thirst now. It's going to be really fun to get through this. Uh, of course, JR and King, they were on commentary. Showed us a shot of the fans uh, in WWF New York. I can't believe that place ever actually existed. The show, though, opened with the WWF Tag Team Championships as Edge and Christian defended their championships against the Dudley Boys. Um, they showed highlights of Edge and Christian attacking the Dudleys with chairs backstage. And then they also showed them uh, giving them... Uh, and unprettier and stuff uh, later on SmackDown that week. The Dudleys attacked uh, Edge and Christian before the bell. Devon and Christian started the match after a nice little brawl on the outside. Nice flapjack by Devon onto Christian. Bubba works over Christian. Christian with the head scissors take over. Bubba goes into the corner, punches Edge, and then hits a sidewalk slam onto Christian. Edge and Christian get the advantage. 
They start to work the neck and head of Devon. Edge hits a neck breaker on Devon. Christian stands on the neck of Devon. Edge and Christian using the ref distractions to their advantage. You know, fake tags to each other, etc., etc. Uh, they attempt an assisted spike pile driver, but Devon counters that. Catapults Edge into Christian, not crouching, crouching him on the top turnbuckle. Double clothesline. Devon makes the tag. Uh, ref Mike Kyoto doesn't see the tag. Uh, so Edge and Christian, they take advantage and they end up attempting a concerto, but they miss Devon. He tags Bubba. Bubba comes in, house on fire. The Dudleys hit the what's up? <laughs> then the Dudleys go for a 3D, but that gets broke up by Edge, who hits a spear and a DDT on a Devon by Christian. Edge and Christian go for their own was up, but Bubba Ray is able to roll through, and Edge gets pushed off by Devon, who then crutches Christian with the was up. And watching their faces. <laughs> <laughs> when they're both, what <laughs> Oh my god, it was hilarious. Oh, Dudleys end up hitting the 3D and the win, and they get the tag team championships. Not a not a long match, maybe 10 minutes. Really, they didn't go a very long time. But a very entertaining match, a very quick-paced match. It was boom, boom, boom. Uh, it went by really, really fast. But the Dudleys, yeah, they would win their, their, I believe it was their second or third tag team championships. And, yeah, well, you know, we're going to talk more about the Dudleys. We're going to talk more about the Dudleys and what happens after this. Don't, don't worry. I was about to say something, but it's all good. So, <laughs> So, they show Drew Carey arriving to the building in a limo. Uh, he's there to promote his improv show, Drew Carey's All-Stars for the Super Bowl that year. I did not watch it even after watching this pay-per-view because I just didn't care. I, that wasn't what I was wanting to watch. I did watch uh, did watch the Drew Carey show, though. Loved that fucking show. Um, Shows an interview with Mr. McMahon from earlier in the day on Heat, talking about Austin and Triple H's altercation, how neither one was really at fault, so both men would receive the opportunities that they were supposed to get that evening, and then they'd go to Triple H. We see Triple H and Stephanie, they're backstage, they're talking about the title match, Triple H about how important the championship is to him, and, you know... Stephanie's going on about how she understands. So Drew Carey comes in. Apparently he's friends with Triple H. Um, he's looking for Vince McMahon. Stephanie decides, you know, we have a, a lot of real beautiful women here. And he's like, oh, yay. Oh, yeah. The WWF does. Divas are some of the most, what is she said, sexy women in the world. God, I hated how they treated the women back then. Um... But she says that she's going to take him to one in particular to the locker room because she's his biggest fan. And that is Trish Stratus she's taking. And that look on Triple H when he he's like, oh, God. <laughs> great. It was great. We just, bravo. Great acting. Then we see the APA backstage. They're looking at each other's numbers. Brash, I was getting a laugh at Farouk because of his number being crap, apparently. Then Crash Holly shows up. He's like, well, we're friends, right? You get in my way. Over the top rope. And he just walks off. And Brash Shaw's sitting there. He's looking funny like, what? Crash Holly, he was he was something else. Squirrely is, I believe, what I've put in my notes. Squirrely. Ladder match for the World Wrestling Federation Intercontinental Championship as Chris Benoit takes on Chris Jericho. This is uh this is a continuation of their rivalry that really got going uh back over the summer of 2000 and these guys you know they're getting into it again this time for the championship and they went right at it right from the get go. Um they go to blows Chops in the corner by Chris Jericho. 
Benoit goes for the cross face, but Jericho counters that into an attempt of the walls. Benoit escapes that nasty shoulder breaker by Chris Benoit. Um, this, like I said, this was very physical right right from the start. These guys were physical with each other. Uh, they're on the outside. Benoit whips Jericho into the post. Jericho misses a baseball slide, gets tossed into the steel steps. Benoit sets up a ladder first. Jericho then pulls him down. Jericho uses the ladder as a long dart right into Benoit's face. A lot of shots to the head in this match. And, well, when you think of what happens just years later, really, really makes you look at this this whole match differently. And kind of makes you cringe a little bit. Kind of makes you cringe a little bit. <clears throat> so Jericho puts the ladder on top of on the top rope, attempts to whip Chris Benoit into the ladder, but Jericho it gets reversed and he ends up face first into the ladder. Suicide dive attempt by Benoit, countered by Jericho with a chair shot. Again, it just when you know you when you know you know, and then you can't unsee it, and it's like straight like this it was one of the most brutal spots i've seen like jericho straight just whoosh, right in his freaking head and been all just dropped like that where was i um so yeah jericho goes to use the ladder uh by dropping it on him um benoit's laying on the barricade jericho goes to fall on it and he misses uh, gets smashed with the ladder, and then Benoit gets a chair shot of his own. Benoit sends Jericho face first into the ladder. Side Russian, uh, side Russian leg sweep off the top rope by Jericho with Benoit stuck in the ladder. That was a nasty bump. Benoit counters a ladder attempt by Jericho with a drop kick. Benoit face first into a ladder off of an Irish whip. Jericho drops off the apron, sending the ladder into Benoit's face. Basically, the ladder was like this. Jericho drops it and he just right into Jer right into Benoit's face. Drop kick off the top rope by Jericho. Benoit dumps Jericho out with a belly to back. I mean, Jericho lands right on the high and tight on the back of his neck. Jericho, um, Jericho with the walls of Jericho on a ladder. Then he just kind of pushes Benoit off. I thought that was it. Match keeps going. Jer Benoit barely pushes it over with his foot. Uh, Benoit, um, more ladder offense. Jericho pulled off the ladder into a cross face by Benoit. It was a nice little exchange there. Benoit runs Jericho into the post shoulder first. And then in the corner, they're both heading to the top of the ladder. Jericho attempts, attempts a superplex but gets shoved off. Benoit goes for the diving headbutt and misses. And he connects with all of that. He connected with all of it. And it looked like it hurt. Uh, Jericho sets the ladder up over Benoit, pinning him down chest first. He goes, he's just within reach of the ladder. And then it gets pushed over and Jericho hangs, hangs himself on the ropes, basically. Benoit gets on the ladder. He's climbing. Chair shots by Jericho. He pushes Benoit off. He falls, landing on the outside. Jericho climbs the ladder, retrieves the championship, and becomes a three-time Intercontinental Champion. It was a match. And it was a tough match to watch at times. Like, again, with when you, with you, if you know what, if you know, you know, right? And seeing some of those shots Benoit was taking, like the diving headbutt, the chair shot off the suicide dive, the multiple shots to the head with the ladder. Um, yeah, it was rough to watch, but super, super entertaining. Like, it was a very entertaining match, despite, you know, everything going on. Um, one of the best ladder matches, I can honestly say, it was one of the best matches on the night, for sure. Um, and there was a couple ladder matches that year, and it was it was top top five for the decade, uh, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Uh, but Jericho winning was definitely the right call. Um, but this this would not be the end. 
good sirs, but I'll get to it. Uh, we see Drew Carey and Trish Stratus backstage talking, and he's kind of being flirty, and she says, oh, she's kind of involved. And he's like, oh, okay, no problem. And Vince comes in, and they plug his pay-per-view again. Drew Carey, celebrity, all-stars. Um, and he somehow convinces Drew Carey to enter the Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah. Drew Carey's in this mother. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it works. He says, okay, sure. And all because he uses Trish. She's like, oh, it, it, that'd be so manly. I'd be so impressed. And she was like, oh, okay. And Vince is even like, you know, I won the Royal Rumble. Not to, you know, he didn't mention the fact that he had help from like 10 people. But hey, sure, why not? <laughs> um, we see China getting ready. Billy's concerned about her. But she basically is like, I feel good. Don't care what the doctors say. I'm doing this match. We get a Jericho interview with Michael Cole. He asks Jericho how he feels, and Jericho's like, how do I feel? How do I feel? You know, I just got my ass kicked. He puts over Benoit and says that tonight he proved him wrong. Then we go to our next match for the WWF Women's Championship as Ivory defends her championship against China. Um, so this started... Uh, with WWE trying to get China to start wrestling women. In real life, backstage, they were kind of wanting China to start wrestling women to kind of make their women's division a little more legitimate, I guess you could say. At least that's what I was reading. Um, in kayfabe turns, uh, this all started when right to censor, Spike Pile drove China and, and hurt her neck back in December of 2000. Um, then they continued to insult her following weeks and Ivory actually like mimicking her and mocking her in a pretend interview. And that's kind of what they ended up doing there. And that led to this match. Ivory came out with Steven Richards, all white socks as JR called him. JR even said at the beginning of this match, and I quote, Ivory, <laughs> Ivory is sexually, rep sexually repressed. And 30 days premenstrual. <laughs> Quote Jim Ross. Oh my god. He's got some lines sometimes. Um, this was a glorified squash match. Uh, China just kind of tosses Ivory around. Snap there and then some forearms and some stomps in the corner. China lifts Ivory up and, and just punches her right out of the ring. She just lifts her, sticks her up on the turnbuckle, pop, and Ivory falls out. China continues the assault. Military presses her back to the ringside area. China continues to have her way with Ivory. And even beats up old White Sox. Uh, China goes for her handspring elbow in the corner. She barely even makes contact, so it looks sloppy anyways. Um, and then she just kind of collapses. As soon as she makes contact, she collapses. Uh, Ivory crawls over and covers her to retain the championship. This match lasted maybe three minutes. Um... And this is where they get China to play it off like she legitimately re-injured her neck and everything. And so they brought out, you know, the medics and everyone comes out. And Billy and, you know, the king are out checking her. They have the somber voice like, this is a very serious situation here, folks. You know, you, you don't make these things up. Except it was kayfabe. This was all kayfabe. It was all part of the story, right? Um, but they take her out in an ambulance to a local medical facility. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll the story continues. Um, so Stephanie is looking for Jan to get a bobby pin for her hair, but instead she comes across Trish and she threatens Trish Stratus and Trish says, oh, why would I worry about you? Then we see Drew Carey getting his gear and he meets Kane. And, of course, Kane's not pleasant. And it's foreshadowing for what's to come later. <laughs> then we see Lowdown, which is Chaz and D'Lo Brown with Tiger Ali Singh. They're arguing about who's going to be in the Rumble, D'Lo or Chaz. And D'Lo's like, look, I've been in it four times. I know what I'm doing. I can win this. And Tiger's all like, no, 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 I'll make the decision. And then Mr. McMahon comes in. 
and he says that he's taking that choice away from Tiger, and it will be neither of them. They have been replaced. And they are, of course, upset. Tiger asks, who is this great superstar who has replaced my men? And he goes, <laughs> you can tell he couldn't do this without being and having a straight face. Drew Carey. <laughs> and Tiger, with the line of the night, who... Who is Drew Curry? <laughs> and Vince just shakes his head and walks away. Then they show a uh, 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 promo of the fans and who they are choosing to win the WWF Championship match. So then we see Triple H pumping himself up in front of a mirror. And then Kurt Angle coming to the ring backstage. So are the next match is for the WWF championship as Kurt Angle with Trish Stratus defends his title against Triple H who's with his wife Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. This all started with Triple H being named number one contender by Mr. McMahon after Triple H cost Steve Austin the title a few weeks before that on Raw uh, and after losing the Hell in a Cell match in December. But the match was more focused on the Vince trish stephanie aspect of everything and the fact that vince had linda sedated and you know stephanie was jealous of triple h but vince was very or stephanie was uh, jealous of trish and mr mcmahon was very much wanting to do things with trish but trish would say oh we're just friends friends with your boss okay it was around this time trish barked like a dog yeah, that's a thing that's going to happen. Aren't you excited? I know I am. No? Okay. I didn't think so either. Um, so yeah, really the, most of the build was just around these three. And then Triple H and Kurt were the side characters. Even during their own match, they were kind of the side story and it was a fucking great match. That's the bad part. So this was also Triple H's first pay-per-view with his game, his the game theme by, by Motorhead. This was his first pay-per-view with that as its theme. Um, so they lock up. Triple H goes for Angle's arm. Angle wrestles out of the hold. Uh, clothesline Triple H out of the ring. Angle sucks chance. Uh, they keep a nice slow pace. Uh, Angle works over Triple H's arm. He hits a series of suplexes, but only gets a two count. On the outside, Angle with some rights. Triple H reverses the Irish whip into the barricade. He works over Angle. Drops a drop toll hold by Triple H in the ring into a grapevine. A dragon screw by Triple H. He begins to work over Angle's knee, and that becomes kind of the story of the match as Kurt Angle's leg. Uh, an Irish whip reversal into the corner sends Triple H out of the ring. Triple H tries to crotch Kurt Angle uh, against the corner post, but Angle pulls him into the post face first. Sends Triple H then into the steps. Kurt Angle goes for a clothesline in the corner and misses. Triple H wraps the leg around the post. Stephanie is distracting the referee, who is Earl Hebner. Uh, a chair shot on the knee by Triple H against the ring post. Angle uh, gets his knee dropped on the steps. They get back in the ring, Triple H with a nice chop block. Uh, and that's another thing about this, they're both working heel. There was no face. This was a heel versus heel match. And somehow they actually made it work. And I'll tell you what, this is a very underappreciated match. Every time I watch this, I'm impressed with this match. It's long as fuck, but I'm impressed with it. Uh, let's see. So yeah, chop block by Triple H. Springboard, elbow. Uh, Triple H, you know, usually they put the foot on the ropes and they drop down on the knee. Well, Triple H drops an elbow on it instead. Um, he goes for a second one, and that gets countered. Uh, countered by Triple H into his drop-down knee, knee across his, you know, face across his knee for a two-count. Works Kurt Angle's legs some more. Slaps on the figure four. Um, and then Triple H tries to use the ropes as leverage. Trish tries to uh, Trish tries to get involved. Oh, yeah, and Triple H used a very old-school Indian Deathlock during this match, too. That was kind of nice. Uh, let's see, where was I? Yeah. 
So Trish tries to get involved, and Stephanie and her, they start to brawl. And then McMahon comes out, and they're brawling, and they're going here, and they're going there. Um, Vince, like, picks Trish up, puts her over his shoulder, and Stephanie pulls him down, and he's trying to keep him. So they fight all the way out of the ring, and this takes probably about two or three minutes time. Like, And the whole time, I guess Triple H is watching this. So Triple H, he goes to turn around. He gets uh, caught with a small package for only a two count. He goes back to the knee. Triple H gets rammed into the ring post. Some fists back and forth between the two guys. And then Kurt Angle hits a really good, beautiful-looking DDT. Uh, starts to build some momentum. Hits a German after an atomic drop. Side Russian leg sweep. Angle goes up top. Gets low, blowed by Triple H. Who then hits a razor's edge for a two count. Covers Kurt Angle two more times and still only gets a two count. He goes for the pedigree, but Angle counters that. But then Triple H pushes him off. Angle hits the corner, falls head first right into Triple H's nether regions. Moonsault by Kurt Angle. Oh my god, his moonsault. Beautiful, beautiful moonsault. Uh, where was I? Yeah, moonsault by Kurt Angle. Angle, uh, he gets his, uh, hurts his knee though off of that. Angle rolls out of the ring. Triple H follows him. Goes to jump off of the apron and accidentally takes out Earl Hebner. Uh, he then beats up Kurt Angle some more, sends him back into the ring. He goes up top, but Angle runs, gets him with a belly-to-belly -belly off the top. There's no ref, though, to make the count when Angle goes for the cover. So Angle goes to get Hebner, but he gets rammed into it. Hebner, who gets rammed into the steps. Triple H gets the title belt, uh, goes to hit Angle with it, but he gets caught with a belly-to-belly -belly overhead release. Then Kurt Angle goes with the shot with the title, but that's countered by Triple H, who hits the pedigree. He goes for the cover. The ref is still down, so Triple H gets out of the ring to wake up Hebner, but then Austin comes out and attacks Triple H. <laughs> Austin with a shot with the title, which busts Triple H open. Uh, he gets Hebner up, gets him in the ring, then comes back into the ring after he's about to leave. Hits Triple H with the stunner. Triple H always took that stunner like a champ. Like, he always made it look like it really was fucking him up. Um, Austin leaves. Angle makes the cover for the slow one, two, three. And Kurt Angle retains the championship. Fantastic match. Um, it just sucks that a lot of attention was taken away from this match even after it happened with the whole triple or with the whole Stephanie Trish Vince thing it it, det it detracted from the match quite a bit while they were out there but I would, I would say even with that happening the match itself was great it really was it was a really good match uh both guys really worked their asses off this was probably one of their best matches um and, you know, it's funny when you look back on it, seeing Kurt Angle, you know, beat The Undertaker and then beat, you know, Undertaker, Triple H, Austin, Rock, everyone inside that six-pack Hell in a Cell, right? Then to go on and beat Triple H one-on-one -on -one and then would face The Rock at No Way Out. Imagine, imagine if he had won that match and had gone on to WrestleMania to face the guy who won the Rumble. That had been... That'd been quite a title run, but I'll get back to that. Oh, don't worry. I'm coming back to that. Yeah, but the match was great. Triple H wakes up after having, you know, his ass handed to him, and he's very angry. So this is not the last time we're going to see Triple H tonight. So we see Rikishi and The Undertaker. They're backstage warming up separately, not together. Um, Kevin Kelly. I forgot Kevin Kelly was still in the company at this point, but he interviews The Rock. Uh, the Rock compares the Royal Rumble to Jambalaya. Talks about Taker and Kane. Are they together? Are they not together? Does Undertaker want to buy Kane a box of chocolates? Is Kane or is Kane going to buy the Undertaker a box of chocolates? Is Undertaker going to rub Kane's big red nipple? The Rock was being The Rock. Uh, he talks about the possibilities of who it could be. Him and Undertaker. Him and Crash Holly. Him and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then he declares himself the guy who's going to win the match. And that leads us to the 30-man rumble. And this rumble match is very much focused around five particular individuals. That being The Rock, Austin, Taker, Kane, and Rikishi. All five who were inside 
well, four of those five men were inside the Hell in a Cell match the previous month at Armageddon. And at some point, I'd like to review that pay-per-view, but that'd be one hell of a match to try to keep up with. No doubt. Uh, 90-second intervals. So this is going to be pretty rap- rapid. I-, I took minimal notes for this. Minimal notes. So Jeff Hardy enters at number one. Bull Buchanan in at number two. Jeff starts fast. Bull uses his strength. Matt Hardy comes out at number three. They work together. They eliminate Bull Buchanan. Of course, then they have a fight. Farouk comes in at number four, beats up the Hardys, but they work together to ultimately eliminate Farouk. Matt then tries to eliminate Jeff, so they come to blows again. Then Drew Carey at number five. He's taking his time getting to the ring. He's, you know, taking it slow. Uh, The Hardys, they're fighting. They're in the corner trying to eliminate each other. Jeff... He drops Matt. Matt holds on by... Jeff's got, like, this shirt wrapped around his waist. He, Jeff uh, Jeff gets grabbed and pulled off simply because he's wearing a sweater. Uh, and Drew Carey celebrates like he was the one who won the match. <laughs> then Kane enters at number six. He comes after, you know, he takes his time getting to the ring. Drew Carey, you know, he's watching. Kane does his pyro, grabs Drew by the throat... Raven comes in at number seven, hits Kane with the kendo stick. Andrew Carey, he leaves. He is out of there. Raven with the fire extinguisher to the face of Kane after sidewalk slam. Raven then gets attacked by Al Snow, who then ends up being number eight. And then the hardcore rumble begins. Uh, (laughs) Al Snow with a trash can lid um, shots to Kane. A bowling ball shot to Kane's ribs. And then a strike onto Raven. A uh, big boot by Kane. Uh, Al Snow and Raven then work together to try to beat up Kane. Perry Saturn comes in at number nine. Saturn works over Kane's leg. Kane then fights him off. Press slam by Kane onto Saturn. And then they all chop Kane down. Steve Blackman in at number 10 uses his sticks on Al Snow. Weapons are being used in the match. Then Grandmaster Sexy comes in at number 11. He tries to eliminate Al Snow, but he gets cut off. Raven jumps Kane from behind. Kane gets pissed, eliminates Grandmaster Sexy with a trash can shot, knocking him out of the ring. Then it goes on to eliminate Al Snow, Raven, Perry Saturn, and Steve Blackman, all before Honky Tonk Man comes in at number 12, who then decides he wants to sing. Um, but Kane not having any of it as he takes the guitar and Cole Cox, honky tonk man, eliminating him. Then the rock in at number 13, rock and Kane, they go at it. Kane gets the advantage, big clothesline by Kane and a big boot by Kane. The good father in at number 14, he goes for the rock rock with a series of rights. sends the good father out of the ring. He's eliminated Kane back on the attack. Rock fights back. Kane hits a sidewalk slam, but then out comes Taz at number 15. Oh, and he's gone. Kane immediately grabbed him, set on the ropes, and knocked him out. So, hey, thanks for showing up, kid. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> oh. Kane tries to eliminate The Rock, but uh, he fights Kane off, tries to eliminate Kane. Then they have like a little production goof where they show the replay, but with like no audio, no audio from the crowd. And you don't hear the ring announce or hear the commentators for about 40 seconds or so. Um, So as soon as the goof happens, Bradshaw comes in at number 16, chops Kane. Him and The Rock work together for about five seconds. Big clothesline from hell onto The Rock. Rock, though, does fight ba- fight back, and Kane gets the Rock and tries to eliminate him. Albert in at number 17 stops the Rock, stomps the Rock in the corner. Kane and Bradshaw, they work together on Albert. Kane is on the verge of elimination, or of eliminating the Rock, but he manages to stay in. Hardcore Holly in at 18. Big scissor kicks, big scissor kick by Albert on Kane. K Quick, also known as R Truth, in at 19. Big power bomb by Bradshaw to K Quick. Val Venus at number 20 goes for Kane, gets slammed for his troubles. 
Then the European champion, William Regal, in at number 21. Brashaw clotheslines the shit out of Val Venus. Test in at number 22. He eliminates William Regal. Then goes after his former partner, Albert. Then, surprise return, the big show at number 23. Big Pop eliminates Test and K-Quick right away. Chokeslams everyone else. Goes to Chokeslam The Rock, but he fights back. And much like the Royal Rumble the year before, The Rock eliminates The Big Show. Big Show's not having it this time. Big Show pulls The Rock out as Crash is coming in at number 24. Choke slams him through the announce table and leaves. Everyone in the ring, though, then are starting to try to work over Kane. As they're trying to eliminate Kane, The Undertaker comes in at number 25. All the competitors end up getting their asses handed to them. Brashaw gets eliminated by The Undertaker. Then Crash. Then Albert's eliminated by Kane. Hardcore Holly eliminated by The Undertaker. And Val Venus eliminated by The Undertaker. Kane and Undertaker, they have their stare down before they can come to blows. Poor Scotty Too Hotty comes out at number 26. He slowly makes the walk down the aisle with some fear in his eyes. He gets in the ring, gets his ass handed to him, double choke slam, and both rock are both of them. But Scotty gets eliminated by both Kane and Taker. I don't know. I can't talk. The Rock starts to move. Then at number 27, Stone Cold Steve Austin. But before he can even get to the ring, he gets jumped by Triple H, who's getting retribution from earlier. They fight through the aisle. Triple H tossed in Austin, tossing Austin around. Rock back in the ring, fighting off The Undertaker and Kane. Triple H beats Austin down some more, bloodies him. Billy Gunn out at number 28, goes for Taker and Kane. Officials have to pull Triple H off of Austin, and he is a bloody mess. JR makes uh, a fuss of Triple H attacking him. That's funny, considering he did it earlier to him, and you were okay with that. But hey, WWE, always double standard for the babyface. Kane and Undertaker work over the Rock and Billy Gunn. At number 29, surprise, it's Haku, who was just your hardcore champion in WCW just days earlier. <laughs> wow, wasn't the Monday Night War something else? <laughs> uh, he takes on, he takes it to Kane and The Undertaker, but they do get the better of him. And Rikishi is number 30. He attacks Austin as Austin's making his way down the aisle, but that backfires as Austin beats the shit out of him. Uh, he gets in the ring, starts fighting with everyone. Taker choke slams Rikishi, goes to headbutt Rikishi not once but twice, and he pays for it as Rikishi headbutts him and then hits him with a sidekick, eliminating the Undertaker as he goes over the top rope. Rikishi then gets the rock and knocks him down, drags him into the corner, goes up top for a bonsai drop, but the Undertaker, but uh, sorry, the Rock should I say? Low blows Rikishi, knocking him out of the ring and eliminating him. That leaves us with our final four. As you see, Billy Gunn, The Rock, Austin, and Kane. They're the final four. Billy goes for The Rock, hits a Famouser, uh, goes to toss Austin out, but that gets reversed, and Austin tosses Billy Gunn out. He is eliminated. Austin Rock have a stare down. They come to blows. Rock sets up for the rock bottom, but Austin fights out of that. Hits the stunner. Some stomps on the rock. Kane, though, pulls him off. Luthez on to Kane. Rock bottom to Austin. Rock tosses Kane through the ropes. Kane is still in the match. He did not go over the top rope. Austin tries to eliminate the rock. Rock does get out of that, reverses it, then tries to eliminate Austin, but then Kane dumps the rock out eliminating him giving Kane his 11th elimination of the match which at this time was a Royal Rumble record and on top of that Kane's been in this match for damn near an hour so we're final two it's Kane and Austin Kane ends up choke slamming Steve Austin after a little bit of a scuffle um he sets up the tombstone but Austin gets out of that low blows Kane as JR calls it an XFL like punt <laughs> wow, aren't times different now? Kane gets the chair, swings, but Austin kicks him, fights off Kane, counters a tombstone, hits a stunner. 
Austin grabs the chair. Three chair shots to the dome. A clothesline and Kane is eliminated, allowing Austin to win his third Royal Rumble match and is going to WrestleMania to face the champion. This was honestly a great Rumble to watch. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of surprises, a lot of filler, but I'll tell you what, the way they were able to fill it with Kane being just straight dominant definitely made the match a lot easier to watch. Um, Seeing Austin still overcome it, obviously 16-year-old me was like, oh, hell yeah, Austin won, which was my pick anyways. I actually think, I think Corey even said The Rock was going to win. And I don't remember who Joe was picking. I don't even think Joe had a pick. Joe was just like, I'm just here to watch it. But, oh, I remember the excitement watching that match. It was so exciting. And where did this lead? Well, we're going to find out. But great Royal Rumble. Probably one of the better ones. You know, there's not many Rumbles like this. Great finish where the right guy won. But again, where did it lead? Well, we're going to find out. Because I'm going to take a little little bit of a page from Brian Zane, sort of. Um, Brian Zane just recently did the final three pay-per-views for WCW in 2001. Well, I'm going to do the first three pay-per-views of 2001 for the WWF, starting with this, the Royal Rumble. Then I'm going to do No Way Out in February, and at the end of March... I'll do WrestleMania X7, a trilogy of pay-per-views that started off a good, started off the year good, and then things kind of downtrended a little bit as the end of the Attitude Era came and went, and we didn't even notice. So that's what I'm gonna do, and of course you guys get to vote. Uh, you guys have voted for my next pay-per-view, uh, and you guys can find that out shortly here in a few days. Uh, I don't have the list in front of me, but, oh, wait, yes, I do. Ha ha. Your guys' votes were for Sin 2001, the Royal Rumble 1992, or Guilty as Charged 1999. You guys can vote for that. That will be what you guys pick. Oh, and sold out 1997. That is what you guys get to vote for for the next pay-per-view this month. So that's kind of what I do. I pick one, you guys pick one. That's how I'm going to do it every month, so... In about two weeks, right? Yes. And on the 29th, you guys will pick the next pay-per-view that I will review. And I will see you guys then. That's your option. Sin 2001, the Royal Rumble 1992, Guilty as Charged 1999, or Sold Out 1997. You guys pick next, and I will review it. But I'm Zach. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. Remember, subscribe to the channel and join the nation. So, until next time, remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and above all else, join the nation. I'll see you later. Yo Bro Nation! Join us at tpublic.com forward slash Yo Bro Nation for all new merch lineup. Like the recess still ain't old. The Yo Bro Nation entertainment t-shirt. The sidekick Susie Stranger Things shirt pretty sweet shirt the yo bro nation swirly shirt how about i love yo face sidekick susie t-shirt Ooh, or the rainbow sidekick susie shirt yeah, yeah. also this exclusive limited time offer we got a forever serenity special sale <sighs> look at that isn't that pretty cool i think it's pretty awesome hope for ambi special sale help support a friend who really needs the help Three different t-shirt designs. We got the Hope for Ambi Black Angel t-shirt. The Hope for Ambi Do You Want to Beat Up Cancer t-shirt. So yes, shop with us now at tpublic.com forward slash yo bro nation. Get all your shirts. Stay safe, stay healthy, and above else, join the nation.